Okay, hello, uh, welcome to um, our second part of looking at um, A-level uh, waves. Uh, first lesson we were looking at um, progressive waves, we looked at uh, wavelength, amplitude, time period, speed, frequency, uh, and we were having a look at phase angles and what's meant by phase angles, and we take a very first look at uh, what we call interference, constructive and destructive. Um, today what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at longitudinal waves and transverse waves. We're also going to have a look at the end um, about polarisation. Um, yeah, which we, uh, sort of, we did touch on it very, very briefly um, at Key Stage 4, but it's the higher tier Key Stage 4. So uh, we'll try and go into a little bit more detail about it today. Um, yeah, polarisation will be at the end. So let's get started. So, longitudinal waves. We should know by now what we mean by longitudinal waves is um, it's a type of wave where the vibration is in the same direction as the ultimate wave movement as well. So remembering that wave is just carrying a vibration but without the movement of any matter. Um, so the way that we can explain, another way that we could describe a longitudinal wave would be almost like a pressure wave because as our uh, vibration occurs, it causes these compressions. Um, which is basically the burst of that vibration moving in between our particles. And what this basically means is that we end up with a compression and something else which we call a rarefaction. Now this is basically, if you could try and imagine our transverse wave where we have our movement up and down, this would sort of be our peak and this would sort of be our trough. It's our places of high pressure and low pressure, so our compressions and our rarefractions. So the wavelength uh, for a longitudinal wave um, will be from the middle of this compression to the middle of the next compression. So you remember that we remember wavelength is as long as it's taken in the same part of, the, of from one wave to exactly the same part of the next wave, that will give you your wavelength. So yes, it's the centre of compressions to the next centre, so to the centre of the next compression. So most commonly we know longitudinal waves or sound waves. Uh, and also those P seismic waves, the primary, primary seismic waves, which again, if you're, quite, if you're struggling to remember what types are, or the, different, the two different types of seismic waves, it's the one reason why I kind of call longitudinal waves, or another way of explaining them, is pressure waves. P, pressure, P, seismic waves, primary waves, so then you know that those longitudinal waves are your P waves, and they're your primary waves, so they're the ones that come first. Um, so yeah, that was our longitudinal. Waves. So then we're going into our transverse waves. Now by this point, this should not be an alien picture to you. Uh, we have our crest or our peak, we have our trough, uh, this is our wave movement, and this centre line here would be our, our line of zero displacement or zero disturbance. Uh, so therefore we would also know that if I put that to there and put an A, that everyone should know exactly what I mean by that, and that if I put a cross here, and I put another cross here, and I drew a line across there, and put a W, then we should know what that is as well. Obviously, this is our amplitude, and this is our wavelength. Um, at the same time, as we know that, as I said, this should not be alien to you by this point. Um, we know that transverse waves um, they come in many different, uh, many different forms and they have different uses depending on their frequency and their actual wavelength. Now this um, is, is a picture or well, a rough idea of how um, an electromagnetic wave would look. So you know we have our electromagnetic spectrum, so that goes all the way down, um, from, all the way up from our, to the top from our gamma rays. Uh, through our visible light and so forth. Um, so this is basically an interaction between uh, a magnetic field and an electric field. So you remember that um, transverse waves have to travel through a medium because they rely on the vibration being moved from one object to another, so from one molecule to another, um, which is why you know they have to have a medium. They can travel through a solid or a liquid or a gas, but they can't travel through a vacuum. Because these transverse waves, or these electromagnetic waves, specifically the electromagnetic spectrum, because they're involved in an interaction between an electric field and a magnetic field, 
this is effectively the medium that they use in which to travel. Now, because these are everywhere, the electromagnetic spectrum can travel through a vacuum, which is why light can travel through a vacuum, which is why we get light from the sun, because it can travel through space. Um, now, they all travel, all light travels through a vacuum at the same speed. Again, roughly 300 million meters per second. So we know transverse waves, or most commonly are S waves, or secondary seismic waves, uh, most commonly are light waves. Obviously there's a great range of these waves through the electromagnetic spectrum, um, which obviously again, different frequencies, different wavelengths, um, all can be used for many different things and have very, very, very different uses. Um, so said, don't forget, this is said, that our electric field and our magnetic field, and it's this interaction that allows electro the electromagnetic spectrum. Again, there's no clues, you know, the clues are there in the name of it. Electromagnetic field. So there's an electric field and there's a magnetic field, and it's that interaction that allows it to be able to travel through um, a vacuum. Now, don't forget, now, you know, not all transverse waves are like this, not all transverse waves are involved in the electromagnetic spectrum, but the ele electromagnetic spectrum is the main one that you need to be concerned with. So that brings us on to this wonderful thing that we call polarisation. Now, when we say and when we talk about this electronic and this magnetic field, and when, so far when we've been talking about transverse waves, and we'll just for now, we'll concentrate on light, because we're going to talk about polarising light, is that when we get a transverse wave, we very much think, you know, it's nice and easy, it's just like that, it just travels up and down on its own path. And that's not actually right, because what actually happens is there's variations in the way that it actually moves. So if we were to take this wave and turn it side on, so the wave was going into the board, or alternatively coming out of the board, our original thought at the moment is that it would just travel along that straight line. It would just quite happily, just like a normal wave, just up and down along this straight line. But what actually does happen is these vibrations cause it to skew off the centre line. So it can actually vibrate from side to side. And different um, frequencies and different types of light will travel at, at different, along these different paths. So some of them will be vertical and some of them will be horizontal. But all of them will vibrate off of their axis to a certain point. Now what polarisation actually does is it actually get, tries to count, it cancels out these vibrations. So what does that really, really good use is the fact that in photography it's used to get rid of um, like sun, like sun blur. So the fact that you can see on this non polarized light everything's really, really bright and you've got that sun glare, whereas with the polarized light you can see that it's darker. And the reason why it's darker is because some of those waves are being blocked. They're not allowed to be moved through. Those vibrating ones that are going off axis are not being allowed through. They're being stopped by this polarized lens, which actually ultimately makes the colors darker, but it makes them sharper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and explain this a little bit more, or a little bit more thoroughly um, with a more visual, because we're quite lucky here, in fact, that the university that I go to, for some reason the projectors that we have, um, they actually used polarised light. So we know that white light is the culmination of all the different colour spectrum altogether. Um, so what we would expect, and what we can also say, as I said, with those vibrations of these waves, we know that those waves aren't travelling in one direction. So I quite like it. It's quite a nice sunny day outside. Unfortunately, I'm still stuck in the library and making these videos for you lucky people. But what we can do is actually show you how polarisation works. So with my sunglasses, which have a polarised lens in them, because what they do is try to cut down the sun glare to your eyes. It's the whole reason of, of sunglasses. So if I put my sunglasses down, and so my sunglasses are horizontal. So what we're going to do, we're going to imagine that the polarising filter on my sunglasses is vertical. So at this point, when it's horizontal, it will only let vertical waves through. So we can say at the moment, taking that as an example, that our blue waves are now vertical. So they're travelling through vertically. So therefore the filter on my glasses is vertical. So if I turn my sunglasses sideways, my filter on my sunglasses now is now horizontal, but the wave is still vertical. Because of that, the filter will not let them through, so therefore it's dark, no blue light goes through. So what happens with red? 
Well, if I put them in vertically there, white, red, so therefore we know that this is black. So therefore we know now that the wave direction of our blue, which is here, which is also black, when I put it here, it's also black as well. So our red must be a vertical wave. So when I turn it to the right, and I put them horizontally, so now my filter is vertical again, we can see the red light come through. So therefore that's showing that our wave is vertical. So what about green? So I'll put my glasses there. Okay, so now our filter is still vertical, but now we have no light. So that must mean that our green wave is actually horizontal. So if I turn my glasses round, now our filter is horizontal, my wave is horizontal, so now we can see green light. And this is all about po what polarisation does, is it filters those waves through. So as you can see, as we discussed before, the light is darker because some of those waves are not getting through, but because although it's polarised here, it's only a little bit darker really because of the tinting of my sunglasses. Because um, this light is already polarised out from it, it shouldn't actually affect the light, uh, the vibrancy of the light anyway, because they will all be in the same direction. So what happens when we have white? So we're saying that white is the culmination of all of our colours. So if I put my sunglasses in vertically, so my filter is horizontal, then we'd expect there to be green because we know green wavelength or the green wave direction is horizontal. So if I put my sunglasses in, and that's what we have, we have green. So it's no longer white, it's actually green because our polarised light, our polarised lenses are stopping any vertical waves from getting through. So now that we said that we know that our red wave is vertical and our green wave is vertical, uh, sorry, our blue wave is also vertical, what we'd expect to see in our blue would actually be an interaction between the two. In, again, interference we will come to, but there will be an interference between these two waves because they're both vertical. So if I put my glasses in, so now we have a vertical filter and we know that both our waves are vertical, the interaction between the blue and the red has resulted in us having purple. And that's exactly how polarising filters work. They will only allow certain direction of waves through at certain times, depending on how the filter is set up. So that is basically polarisation uh, and how polarisation works. Um, as I said, I'm quite lucky that the, uh, the, the lights here, the projectors here, are polarised light. Why they are, it's very rare, well, I don't know why they are, but I'm thankful that they are like that. So that is basically polarisation. And that's the end of today's lesson. We looked at longitudinal waves, uh, we looked at the properties of them and the properties of transverse waves. Um, also, the um, electromagnetic waves, how they differ, uh, the medium that they use, or those interaction between the electro, uh, between electro electric field and the magnetic field. Uh, and we had a look at polarisation, and hopefully um, the demonstration that we have for that made things a little bit clearer about that as well. Um, so that's the end of today's lesson. Um, our next lesson, we're going to be looking at refraction um, at a plane surface. We're also looking at um, total internal reflection. Uh, both of those concepts we did start at Key Stage 4. Obviously, we're going to go into a little bit more depth and we're going to have the maths of how to work out uh, refraction angles as well. Okay, uh, yeah, cheers for that. My name's Ian McDowell. I'm a student at Brighton University. Thank you.